before we jump into part two of our Costa Rica adventure, here's a quick look at what happened in part one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Tell me where your adventures are taking you this year. are located within a 30 minute boat ride from the Flamingo Marina and offer a unique experience and spectacular encounters with wildlife. The islands are formed from 20 individual islands and inlets surrounded by clear Pacific Ocean waters. For the best visibility, book the dry season, which is from January to March. The islands are among the most visited places for scuba diving tourists and perfect for observing marine creatures. Between September and March, you'll see whales. Giant manta rays are from November to May. these waters are full of wonderful creatures like rays, turtles, sharks, octopus, big schools of fish and so much more. The water temperatures are usually coldest during the dry season, which is January to February, and warmer in the rainy season, upwards of around 25 degrees. this part of the trip I was still battling a really bad sinus infection so there was no scuba diving or deep diving for me. Our tour boat went to two locations with about an hour ocean time in each spot. boat ride back in we were lucky enough to have an experience with a whale and her calf right next to the boat as well as a couple of stingray surfers. Once I got back to Tamarindo I picked up Sky and we were heading south for about an hour and a half drive down to Oshina National Park. is a whole lot different to Australia. To book camping, you're pretty much just calling someone's mobile phone and pulling up into their backyard. <laughs> they do have amenity blocks outside and most of the campgrounds are kept really nice. The Nomad America crew were really helpful when we picked up the car. They had mapped out all the locations we wanted to go, let us know recommendations for camping. They um, gave us the contact numbers, messaged all their friends around, made sure the roads were open that we could get to these places. Um, and I also had my phone on data roaming, so I had $5 a day and I had reception majority of the locations that we went. 
finally made it to Nusara. Sky had a relaxing day doing a yoga in Tamarindo. She's all zen out. I had my ocean swim uh, hour and a half down to uh, Nusara. Bumpy, bumpy rides as you would have seen. A little bit of a river crossing, but nothing that the four wheel drive can't handle. Highly recommend getting a four wheel drive in Costa Rica. The roads here are wild. <laughs> um, but yeah, no rain this afternoon. So I showed you how to set up the tent just before. And now uh, we are at just north of Nasara, um, Oy Oysana? Oysana, it means oyster. Um, and this is a very famous beach known for lots of turtle hatching. So 5 a.m. tomorrow, we're getting up, hopefully no rain, and we are watching some turtles hatch just in front of our camp. It was uh, 39,000 for the night for two people, 39,000 39, corona, corona, <laughs> corons, um, or 60 US dollars. Uh, two people and your tour is included in the morning. Wildlife Refuge is a protected turtle nesting refuge located north of Nusara on the Nicoya Peninsula. The main attraction within the refuge is Oshino Beach, the largest of two locations in Costa Rica where the annual arrival of the Olive Ridley sea turtles takes place. the locals have taken it upon themselves to protect the turtles as well as this natural phenomenon that only happens in nine places around the world. nesting occurs all year round but hits peak in the rain season. The hatchlings surface at night within 45 to 54 days of nesting depending on the incubation temperatures. was to watch and protect these baby sea turtles clamber towards the sea, avoiding predators like dogs and vultures. nesting sites in Costa Rica require visits through authorised access points with a guide to protect the turtles and this important natural phenomenon. Well Gilbert and Maria were so lovely, uh, felt very safe where we were. Um, beautiful beach walk this morning. Hatchlings? Yes, so cute. turtles. <laughs> uh, we've driven down, it was about 15 minutes down to, uh, where are we? Nasara. Nasara. Um, gonna grab a coffee, just filled up the tank, and it was about 130 something dollars Australian. So, not too bad over here. Yeah. I was expecting about eight bucks a litre, so <laughs> not as no. bad as Google told us.
just walked up to camp. Uh, this is Gaza Beach, which is just south of uh, Nasara. Beautiful little camp spot, so clean. Uh, it was $15 US dollars for two adults for one night. Uh, but we have actually decided we're going to go into Monteverde. So we have two days up there and then two days down near Jaco. So trying to make the most of the rest of our trip because it's not sunny weather. If the sun was out beautiful, we would definitely be staying here a little bit longer. But might just head to the jungle and start to do some night tours and see if we can find a sloth or some toucans. So we've got a three and a half hour drive ahead of us now. Monteverde is a far cry from Costa Rica's tropical shores, but it has its distinct beauty. It's a popular eco-tourism location with beautiful rainforests and a diverse range of flora and wildlife. It is the best place to see the cloud forest as well as the iconic hanging bridges. So we just got up to Monteverde and it is torrential rain. We're gonna set up camp, um, head over to a little restaurant for dinner. That's us done for the day. So the last 24 hours in Costa Rica has taught us a very, very big lesson. When they say it's wet season. It is wet season. It's definitely wet season. Uh, do not try and go to the cloudy forest in Mont uh, Monteverde in the wet season. You will get rained out. Um, we tried to camp and yeah. It was, an it was an ordeal. It wasn't fun for anybody, but I'm sure in the people were so lovely at the campsite. Um, and yeah, I would definitely go back, but just not in the wet season. No. Uh, absolutely beautiful spot, uh, Bahuco, just south of Paco. Uh, got the rooftop out, drying out. I've never experienced so much rain in my life. We didn't even get to do the um, El Tigre waterfall because it was just torrential rain the next morning. We, we legged it out of there and we came by the coast, which we do not regret. Beautiful, beautiful spot. So, lesson learnt, wet season, stay by the coast. <laughs> stay by the stay coast. By now this is a spot and a half. Yeah. Makes up for Monteverde in the rain. How beautiful. Living Barry, living. <laughs> what a delicious lunch that was. I'm in a bit of a food coma right now. Um, we have had such a great time here in Costa Rica. Uh, it, unfortunately, it's been rainy season, so lesson learned, come in the dry season, um, but it's been so beautiful. Everybody has been so lovely. The locals are so lovely and so helpful. Uh, hot tip, learn a bit of Spanish before you come here 
and always carry a bit of cash with you um, because the tolls that you drive through and stuff they only do cash no FBOS so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this adventure as much as we have um, like subscribe leave a comment down below uh, tomorrow we are going to Manuel Antonio hopefully we see a sloth which I might run in the b-reels after this but if there's no b-reels I didn't see a sloth <laughs> uh, huge shout out to Nomad America for lending us the epic Prado for the last week or so um, yeah hope you guys enjoyed it see you on the next adventure